Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you inverse volume grouping in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here with two tracks. I have a piano and a pad, but they're both playing the same part. I just want to balance the two different sounds against each other. Here's the piano. And here's the pad. Now, obviously, I could just use the faders and move them separately. But sometimes you want to adjust them and have one go up while the other goes down. So you can get the perfect balance of each of them without changing the overall volume. And we could do that with inverse volume groups. So here's how you do it. We'll select the piano first. Then we'll go to the track menu right here and go down here to track grouping parameters. We could also trigger this by hitting Shift G. And that opens up this dialog here where we could group our tracks. So I only selected the piano so far. So we go over here and we could choose volume master. Then if we go to the pad, we could choose volume slave. This is going to change based on what tracks we select. So we go back over here to piano, see it switches to volume master or volume slave. So by doing it this way, if we adjust the piano, they both move together. But if I adjust the pad, just that one moves. But in this situation, we want them to move the opposite direction. So I'm going to go to the slave on our pad and go down over here to reverse volume. And what's going to happen now, if I bring this up, this one goes down. If I bring it down, this one goes up. But because this is not a master, it's going to move independently. So we can still adjust them this way. But if we want them to move in the opposite direction, just grab the master one or the piano. So now I could balance this while bringing the piano up while the pad goes down, or bring the piano down while the pad goes up. So you can get a perfect balance while the volume should stay consistent. And we could always hold shift to bypass it so they can move separately or let go and they're grouped. So if I want less piano, bring it down. Or more piano, less pad, bring it up. And this will work in so many different applications. Let me show you another one. This time I have two guitar tracks that are played as one performance using two different mics. Mic number one and mic number two. And I want to blend them to create one track. Again, we could do them separately like this. But it can be hard to get that perfect balance as it's getting louder or lower. So if we want the volume to stay consistent, we could use inverse volume groups. Again, we'll select the first track, Shift G. We'll choose Volume Master, select the second track, and choose Volume Slave, and reverse volume. So now once again, if I bring this up, this one goes down, or if I bring this one down, this one goes up. So I can balance the two different mics while the guitar overall is the same volume. This is also very useful for parallel buses. Let me show you. In this situation, I have some drums on this track with a parallel bus that's compressed on this track. Here's the drums dry. or compressed. But again, I want to mix them together and doing it like this, change the overall volume as I bring it up. So it's a lot easier with inverse volume groups. So again, I'll select this track, Shift G, 
This time I'm going to choose Volume Master and Slave and do the same thing for the Compressed Boss. Now they're both going to be grouped no matter which fader I grab, but I can inverse it on the second one right here. So again, I could bring this down, this one goes up, and vice versa. And I can get a perfect balance of my compression bus against the dry drums. And again, I could hold down shift to bypass it. So I could adjust them separately with shift or let go and they're inverse grouped. Now one other group I want to show you is using this for panning. I have a conga track right here, but it sounds kind of mono. Check it out. The reverb sounds stereo, but the direct sound is coming from the middle. And I want to create more motion while he's playing the conga. So we could use inverse groups to accomplish this. I'll go to this track here, copy it, then paste it below it. So it's now duplicated. We'll pan the first one to the left and the second one to the right. Now we can inverse group them to create a panning effect. I'll select the first one, Shift G. Let's make this just the master. And this one, the slave. And once again, we'll choose a verse volume. Let's bring this one down. We'll hold that shift and watch what happens. Just like that, we can create a panning effect. And we can automate that to create a custom panning effect throughout the whole song. Just put both tracks into touch mode right here. And we can write that automation. Pretty cool effect. Now, there's so many different ways we could use this feature, whether it be a lead vocal against a double vocal, or a lead vocal against harmonies, or harmonies against each other. Pretty much anything you could think of where you want one track volume going up and the other going down, we could use this feature. And it shows up right down here reverse volume for any of our groups. So that's pretty much it. That's inverse volume grouping in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.